Hi everyone, it's Lori Wired, and today we're going to be talking about Android reverse engineering. So we're going to be looking at one of the top level components to Android reverse engineering, mainly taking a look at the Android manifest file. So this is the file where you're probably going to start your analysis when you first grab an Android application. So let's take a look at this file, which is available in Malwarebazaar, and I'll be linking this in the description of this video. So this is actually an Android banking trojan named Cerberus, and you'll be able to go and download the sample if you would like to follow along. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded this sample, so I'm going to take a look at it in JDEX right here. So JDEX is going to be our decompiler for our Android applications, and if you take a look at this Android APK which we have here, you're actually going to see an encoded version of the Android manifest file if you just try and go ahead and unzip the APK, which I'm about to show you right here. So I'm going to extract this to a folder and take a look at where the Android manifest file is and let's look at what it looks like just raw on disk. So if I look at it in Notepad++ here, you can see that there's just a ton of junk. So we actually need something such as APK tool or JDEX to go ahead and decode this Android manifest file. So let's just close that out here and actually take a look at what the decoded manifest looks like. All I need to do is drag and drop to open my APK and then JDEX will start doing its magic. So the APK uh, Android manifest is going to go over in the resources section right here. So let's open resources and then Android manifest.xml. Let me make that larger so that everybody's able to see. So what is the Android manifest? This is going to contain all of the different permissions as well as all of the components that you're going to see inside this Android application. So this is going to define all of the capabilities and classes that you're going to be able to interact with and analyze if you're reverse engineering this APK. So first of all, let's try and find what the package name is. So if the package name is going to be inside of this manifest tag right here, and if I go over and scroll to the right, I can find package name for this is going to be calm October arrive. So this is going to help me when I'm looking for the entry point of this application. So I can see on the left hand side here, we have our source code and I can see calm expand this October expand this arrive and then there's a ton of classes and stuff inside of arrive. So we found the package name and then another thing you're going to want to take a look at if you're trying to do some dynamic analysis further on is going to be the minimum SDK version. So if you're trying to create an emulator, you want to make sure that the SDK version of the emulator is this number or greater or else it's not going to run. So we took a look at the package name and then the SDK versions. Next thing I want to take a look at is going to be the permissions that this file is using. So you can see all of these uses permissions tag right here. When an APK is running, it has to actually define all the capabilities and permissions that it needs to run. So if I'm looking for some malicious behavior, this is a really good place to start because I can see right initially here that it's actually able to call a phone, modify some audio settings, and record audio is a really suspicious one for me right here. Additionally, it's able to read SMS messages, write SMS messages, uh, and I even see it's able to capture some video output. So if I'm looking at this and I'm trying to determine whether this Android package is malicious or not, uh, you can definitely get a good idea just from looking at the permissions that it has. So moving on down, let's find the actual entry point of our code. 
So you have something called Android application subclasses, which are going to be the first thing that runs if they exist. So they aren't actually going to always exist. So why don't we take a look and see if there is one here? And if so, this is going to be the thing that's running first in our application. So if I want to see whether this has an application subclass, I go to the application tag right here. And then I'm going to scroll to the right hand side and I'm looking for the text Android colon name. And that name right there is going to define the class name of the class that's going to run for this application subclass. So I'm scrolling over to the right here and here we go. This is our Android name, so that means that this uh, APK has an application subclass named com October arrive as the package name, and then the class name is this G A D N T right here. So this is going to actually be our entry point that we have found in our Android manifest file. So if I want to find it in our source code, all I need to do is come over here to the source code, match the name here. We have arrive. And then it is G-A-D-N, find it down here. There it is. And then this is going to be our code that's running first when the application is called. So I'm gonna go back to the Android manifest here because we'll look into the code at a separate time. Now that I have found the initial entry point of this application, the next thing that's going to be called when a user is actually clicking on the app icon and they're opening up this malicious app on the phone, it's going to be the main activity. So I'm going to go ahead and look for two things. First of all, which I can find here is this Android intent action main paired with Android intent category launcher. The pairing of these two is going to signify that this is the main activity called when a user clicks the app icon. So if I want to see the class name here, I can go over to this activity and then find this is going to be what's called. This is our main activity. So I'll look for it on the left hand side, but actually for this case, it looks like this code does not exist. So there, this is actually a pretty common situation that I've seen. So I'm thinking that the application class is actually decrypting additional classes when it's running and loading them. And this is going to be the name of one of the classes that it's loading, but it just doesn't exist yet. All right, so now we've found our main activity. So let's move on to the different components that are part of this Android manifest. So first of all, if you notice that the main activity is inside of this activity tag right here. So the activities are actually going to be user interface components. So this means they're actual components that the user is going to be you know, clicking buttons on or being able to read text from and everything. So these are the UI components that they're able to see. So moving on, if I want to see different kinds of components inside of an app, I can see we have receivers and services as well. So taking a look at receivers, these are going to be code that runs on upon receipt of a specific event. So for example, I can have something that's sitting there listening for an SMS message to be received and then run that code once it has received an SMS message. For example, here, this one is actually waiting until the device admin enabled is actually received. So once that flag is received, it's going to run this receiver code. So taking a final look here, we have services. So services are going to be code that's running in the background of an app. So you're not actually going to see anything happening. So you could have a malicious service doing something in the background, but it's not a UI component. So the user isn't going to be aware at all of its behavior. So we had our services and receivers as well as our activity that the user will be interacting with. And we have quite a few of those here in this application. 
And finally, we have a provider. So this is going to be when the APK is interfacing with a database or some kind of external storage or trying to share files between applications like it's doing in this particular scenario. And that shows the end of our Android manifest file. So keep in mind, you want to look at this Android manifest file when you're first opening up an application and starting to reverse engineer it. So we went through here and we found the entry points and all other possible asynchronous kind of code that can run. So your services in the background and your receivers at different events that are occurring in your application, as well as your main activity that the user is interfacing with. So if you are opening up an app, you don't want to just start looking at the code. You want to first figure out what your entry points are and begin code analysis from there. So that was your quick deep dive into your Android manifest to give you a good idea of where to start looking when you're trying to analyze an Android application.